Welcome to Pioneer FX. Today is Wednesday, the 3rd of November, 8 p.m. here in the UK. Hope you guys are having a fantastic week. Um, yeah, we're just coming, we literally just come, come off the back of the Fed's meeting uh, earlier today, uh, about an hour ago, less, well, less than an hour ago. And these were the comments from uh, Fed Chair Power. Let me just share my screen with you. <clears throat> so with his opening statement, he says, or he said that the summer surge from COVID has held back the recovery in some sectors. Activity has been restrained by bottlenecks, notably in autos. Slowdown in Q3 was centered in areas hit by the pandemic. 4.8% unemployment understates softness in joblessness due to low workforce participation. We expect economy will adjust to supply and demand imbalances, but it, is, but it is difficult to predict. Timing of when global supply chain recovers is highly uncertain. This is not just in the US, this is happening worldwide uh, with regards to supply, supply chain issues, hence the reason why inflation has been ticking up and is starting to ring a bell for the dollar. If we were to see signs that the path of inflation was going to persistently uh, above our goal, we would take action. So if they were to see path, a sign of inflation going even higher, they're going to take some action. If the economy develops largely as expected, we will continue the $15 billion dollar month uh, taper per month, which is a significant amount. Which would, which would be complete in the middle of 2022, putting the country, the economy in further deficit. We have a different and more rigorous test for hiking. So they're gonna be doing a few tests for hiking, uh, which could have a significant impact on the dollar. We understand the difficulties that high inflation poses for individual and families, particularly those with limited means to absorb higher prices for essentials such as food and transportation. Powell said, but noted that they could fix supply chain issues. And then in the Q&A, Q&A question and answer, uh, he stated that we should see bottlenecks ease by 2022. Uh, we think we can be patient. We don't think it's time to raise interest rates. So it's possible to meet maximum employment threshold next year. It's certainly within the realm of possibility. We don't have evidence of a wage price spiral. We'll be watching careful, carefully. We don't expect troubling increases in wages to emerge. Inflation is due to bottlenecks. So we know that inflation is the big topic here. And he's just understating what he's stating, basically. He's saying that it's not, it's not, the, it's not the issue due to bottlenecks and very strong uh, demand. Our policy is putting us in a position to address a range of plausible outcomes. So the reason why inflation has had occurred since after this lockdown um, was mainly due to obviously economies reopening and prices just spiraling higher, which is uh, which is jeopardizing the which is jeopardizing the economy because individuals are not willing to spend as much. They're not willing to invest as much either. So they're looking to sort of claw back uh, due to inflation equals higher prices. So there's something not quite right with uh, what Jay Powell has mentioned here uh, with regards to the dollar. Our policy is putting us in a position to address a range of plausible outcomes. He says he won't offer much more detail regarding bar for changing pace Q and E says we, we wouldn't want to sur surprise markets with a shift in taper strategy. Transition to services spending from goods could soften inflation. We start to see some bottlenecks abating, but they are worsening overall. Inflation has been higher than we anticipated. Sites global supply chain says it's very difficult to forecast. I don't think we're behind the curve. Uh, no comment on renomination process. Inflation is being driven by goods now, whereas it was for services for 25 years. 
five hundred to six hundred thousand jobs per month would be good would be a good progress. There's no hint of panic from Powell on inflation, any effort to put a hike on the table. The caveats are there, but we're prepared to be patient. So they're not looking to raise interest rates just yet, uh, according to Fed. Uh, the Fed is certainly shaken in its belief on low inflation, but it's, but it's certainly not broken. In turn, the US dollar is beginning to roll over and naturally the stock market likes it. So let's have a look at... Um, the markets now, uh, in terms of the reaction from Mr. Powell. So you could see here, as I mentioned from uh, from Monday, actually, what to expect. There were there were two scenarios. You could see a price spike to the upside from Monday. The first, as we saw it, it was really well. It didn't really spike as much, but it pushed up slightly currently consolidated in this range here. So what to expect now is potentially a spike higher, which we didn't quite get, or a push down lower. So what I'm expecting now, let me get rid of these so that we could update this now. So you can see price has broken below this uh, resistance level, or which was support, which is now resistance. So what to expect now is potentially a push down here on the low end to drive traders to potentially buy in this area and then further meltdown for the dollar. So in terms of a fundamental shift here from the Excel spreadsheet, overall we've had a lot of PMI data that came out throughout this week. Um, and which has slightly shifted our fundamental uh, sort of bias ranking. Australia being still strong as it stands, and um, also the dollar slightly ticking higher. However, the overall future bias for um, for the dollar is bearish. So make the most of it since it's extremely high or pushing towards that high end because uh, I am expecting to see some weakness for the dollar. And also we've had a slight shift on the yen due to uh, some, some, some recent decent um, PMI uh, data here, which is, slight, which is slightly above the 50 mark here for the yen. So expected to see some shift there for the yen to push higher in the future. And I think that's that in terms of the fundamental ranking. Let's shift back to our trades. So still currently looking for shorts for this one, uh, for the dollar that is. So we can have a few, a fair few scenarios. We could potentially have a spike higher to these highs as well to attract buyers into the market. And then that meltdown towards 93.2. AED USD, this was a perfect setup. I did mention we could have two scenarios one of them being price pushing up from Monday and then potentially consolidating, attracting a lot more sellers in the market before pushing higher towards our target. Or we could have a retracement, which we did have. So this is the golden opportunity here now. Uh, trend line, this ascending trend line, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And you can see that this is the third touch of this trend line, which I've marked with the, with the yellow box. So what to expect here? A push down. We did. Ex we, I did. I did mention to you guys on Sunday that we could expect to see a retracement, which we did have. So this is the golden opportunity to start buckling up into potentially adding some more buy trades or some more buy setups for AED USD uh, to push higher. So we'll see how this one reacts uh, through the week. USD JPY, this has been relatively quiet since uh, the start of this week. Uh, there were two scenarios. Uh, what to expect now is potentially a push down to this area over here of 113.5, which we did sort of quite get. We did get that, but expecting to see potentially a, a, con a bit more consolidation before pushing lower towards 111.656. If we do get uh, a push higher, this area here is going to be the golden opportunity to look for sales 
or potentially even placing a pending order at uh, 114.8 will be ideal for USD uh, yen. But it's been a few weeks now we've been waiting for this one. So looking for that decent, decent push uh, lower. USD Swiss franc now. With regards to USD Swiss franc, I was expecting to see a retracement higher again to attract some more buyers before potentially price melting and pushing through towards this area here. But looking at this now, if you if you zoom out on, 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 on the four hourly of USD Swiss franc, this is a really, really powerful uh, sort of demand area 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So this is the fifth and sixth piercing through this region here so it is a big big massive support area which a lot of traders are currently looking left and potentially looking to buy here so what to expect is potentially a breakthrough eminently towards 0 0.904 to liquidate their setups um, but if we do get a retracement higher this will be a perfect opportunity 0 0.1 0 0.2 potentially the third touch of this trend line if it does break we could potentially re-enter USD Swiss franc, but it did hit our TP1 uh, last week through to this week as well. So yeah, currently out of this trade, expecting to see a retracement for USD Swiss franc. New Zealand Swiss franc, uh, it has retraced. Um, it was pushing lower. Actually, this one hit our TP. This one hit our first TP of this area. Now it's currently retracing. So what to expect now is it's actually following this red line here, this red trend line. Let me get rid of these and let me get rid of that. So what to expect now is potentially a push higher into this area here before melting through. So let me put another intermediate sort of support here. So we could get that break higher, attract more buyers into the market before that, before the next meltdown. So second TP of 0 0.64 is going to be our target. Palladium, palladium, palladium. This one here pushed up since the start of this week, hit this area over here, this resistance area, trying to attract as many sellers into the market, which we can clearly see. So what to expect now is a retracement, which we did have. This is a golden opportunity to potentially enter for longs, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and this is the third touch of the descending trend line. Price broke out, come, currently coming to retest it. So what to expect here now is a push higher towards 21200, or we could push lower into this boundary to attract potentially more sellers in the market before that massive impulsive wave. So expecting 2200 to be targeted for palladium. Oh, go, uh, oil has hit our second TP this week. Fantastic trade. This was our first TP. Second TP is here. Uh, off the back of uh, the dollar news, the oil has been melting. And not only that, this has also hit our third touch of this uh, ascending trend line 0 0.1 0 0.2 and here's the third touch of the ascending trend line price broke out more or less came to retest this area not quite and then melted through so expected to see some more weakness for for l our target third target of 77 is going to be our next target so what to expect now it's actually following this blue line perfectly you can see it came down hit this area, potentially come back up for a slight retest, attract some buyers into this area or within this area, which I've already highlighted. Then no need to highlight it again uh, before melting through. So expecting to see 76 as our next target. Uh, great momentum shift down from these extreme highs, uh, over 400 pips in profit. But do bear in mind, we were selling from way back here, selling in these in these in these regions here. So currently, overall, still in still in drawdown for oil. Uh, however, many many plenty of positions to take it down. 
Oh, uh, sorry, gold. This has been a beautiful trade, actually. It put, came down to our area of interest. This was the golden box that I drew. Uh, so what to expect now is there's a lot of, let me get rid of these lines because there's not much clarity here now. Get rid of these boxes. So two scenarios for this one. Actually, one scenario that I drew for this one. I think I got rid of the rest of them. Um, we could. What to expect now is we could potentially. This is a great area actually to start positioning yourselves for a long setup. Potentially, you could go higher and settle at eighteen zero eight before pushing up to our uh, second target. This could be our first target here. Or we could see a retracement lower down into this area, following this pink line before pushing higher. So this one here is going to be the golden box. Could even place a pending order down here with a nice tight stop loss, psychological stop loss of 1733 to ride this bad boy up. So at the moment, loads of traders are, are coming in short because of this break of trend. A lot of traders shorten this now. There could be a lot of liquidity lying in these areas. So expected to see, uh, to target actually as our first target, 1880 for uh, gold. Euro AED, we've been selling this from way back in September, right the way down to our last TP. So now it's currently retracing. What to expect for Euro AED is potentially if we get a breakthrough higher into this area, we could potentially start to look for shorts to push down towards um, this area over here. Towards uh, 1.53 as the psychological figure. So I'm keeping an eye, an eye out of this one. This one's still currently not within our range just yet. I will keep you guys informed. AUD CAD. I did mention to you guys we could have a deep retracement. We're currently here. Prices are, has touched 0 0.1, 0 0.2. This is the third touch of the trend line. It has broken out of this third touch. We're waiting for around 40 minutes to see uh, what this breakout could be. It looks like the strategy now. For well, this one is directly up towards 0 0.929 so potentially we could settle up here to attract some more sellers in the market potentially take some partials as well in the meantime before pushing higher through to 0 0.937 as our long-term target so still expecting to see uh, 0 0.937 for AUD CAD since oil has been melting Surely AUD CAD can start to pick up the pace. The dollar, we know where that's heading at this moment in time. There's a lot of bullshit remarks from the Fed uh, talking about uh, raising interest rate, but he doesn't look like he wants to raise interest rates just yet. And tapering still ongoing. And yeah, it's just crazy right now for the dollar. A lot of traders currently long in this one off the back of news. So what to expect now is a drop down. Volatility. It's at a very, very interesting price. I did mention to you guys, there's two areas that we could potentially start to long from is basically around 13. If we get a break through this area, this is going to be the key area to, to keep a close eye on for that momentous breakout. At the moment, it's been relatively slow again attracting sellers into the market so there's a lot of liquidity lying around these areas here which i'm targeting uh, for the vix so still expected to see vix to push up it hasn't quite it hasn't quite uh pushed up just yet off the back of news so there's still a lot of uh outstanding uh high risk news we've got retail sales to watch out for we've got the rest of euro pmis coming out tomorrow there's a lot happening throughout this week and then towards the end on Friday, we've got the big FOMC meeting, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> uh, 
sorry, the non-farm payroll meeting on 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 Friday at twelve thirty. So there's a lot happening towards this towards the end of this week. Volatility has has shifted down, and a lot of trades have been relatively slow. We've had major major retracements for some of the trades, but expecting to see some major major movements straight through to uh, profits at the moment. Oil is doing fantastically well. AUDUSD has come to our beautiful area. So keep a close eye on this. You could potentially start to long from these lows over here uh, to target uh, our long-term target of 0 0.768. So do keep an eye out of these trades that I've just uh, that I've just gone through with you guys. Um, New Zealand Swiss franc has come to our sort of discounted area. Palladium discounted region. Um, yeah. That's that AED CAD. This is going to be another beautiful trade potentially through to this week. Is there any questions before I finish up? Any questions? Jermaine? <clears throat> How are you getting on? You good? Oh, good. Oh, good. That's great to hear, mate. Great to hear. What trades are you currently in at the moment? <clears throat> 